L, three times a charm. So uh, with that, I will call to order this uh, special meeting between the Ferndale School District School Board and the Lummi Nation Board, um, School Board. Uh, so first thing I'd like to do is for us just to go around and introduce ourselves. Um, I'm not sure how the screens line up, but maybe the uh, um, folks from the Lummi School Board could introduce themselves and then we can follow up like that. So Dan, I'll turn it over to you. Hi, I'm Jenna Think Bonner, Ferndale High School alumni many, many, many years ago. Um, I am the chair of the Lummi Nation School Board now, and I thank you guys for doing this. It's all been kind of crazy because of the weather, but if we haven't learned anything in this last few years is to roll with the punches in this in these crazy times. So um, it's good to see you all. And I thank you guys for being here tonight. I'll hand it off to Kathleen. Good evening. My name is Kathleen. I'm a member of the Lummi Nation board. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for your guys' this time. And Kevin, you're, um, you're not muted. Okay. Um, well, I, I guess I pass that to me. I am Kevin Villas, principal of Lummi Nation School, um, and happy to be here tonight. Bernie? I'm Bernie Thomas. I'm the Lummi Nation Education Director, and um, I'm also uh, Heather Layton's neighbor. So I got to be very, very careful. Very careful. I'm Melinda Cool. I am a member of the Ferndale School Board, a proud parent of a senior, and also a graduate of 2019, um, and very happy to be here. Thank you very much for bringing us all together. And I'll hand it off to Leanne. I'm Leanne Riddle. I've been on the Ferndale School Board for 16 years. This is my last time, and I am so happy to be spending it with you guys. So um, thank you. I wish we were in the same space. And I will pass it off to Kevin. I'm Kevin Erickson, uh, Ferndale School Board Director and uh, Ferndale High School alumni 84, since that seems to be a theme tonight. Um, happy to be here, glad we're having this meeting. And um, I totally agree with Jana. Um, we are learning to roll with the punches, no matter whether it's viruses, weather, or anything else that gets thrown at us. And I'll hand it over to um, Jesse. Mm -hmm. Jesse Beardorf. I'm on the Ferndale School Board and I'm so happy to be here, whether it's Zoom or not. And thank you for this meeting. And thank you, Heather, for helping me. All right. So let's see. I don't think Peggy, Peggy are you connected? Yeah. I'm back. I, I lost my internet connection on my laptop. I'm so I just grabbed my phone. Okay. So we're just doing introductions. Sorry about that. So you can introduce yourself. Oh, oh, okay. Um, I am Peggy Upiano. Um, uh, I am the, uh, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, um, uh, new school board member for District 5 for the Ferndale School District. Um, I don't really have much more to say than that. That's, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. And I'm Andrew McLaurin. I'm the current president of the school board, but this is also my next to the last official meeting uh, uh, tonight. Will in my 12 year tenure, and I'm very happy to be here meeting again with the Army Nation representatives. So thank you. And now we'll just do a quick introduction around of the um, uh, Ferndale administrative staff who are here. Kelly. 
Thanks, Andrew. Um, my name is Kelly Larrabee, and I am one of the executive directors of teaching and learning here in Ferndale, and I tend to focus on our elementary age students. So um, thank you for um, allowing us to be here tonight, and we appreciate this um, partnership. So thank you. Faye. Good evening. Um, I'm Faye Britt, and I'm the other executive director of teaching and learning and tend to focus on secondary, but I also um, work very closely with the Native American and the Aulami um, program. So very glad to be here and thank you for all joining with us. And um, John. Welcome, I'm John Fairbairn, the Executive Director of Human Resources. Um, and when I get bored with that, I do COVID stuff around here um, just for, for fun. And since we're announcing our kids, um, Proud dad of, of of twins that graduated with with Melinda and and with Heather's. Um, Mark. Hi, I'm uh, Mark Debach. I'm the assistant superintendent for business and support services. Normally, this year I am the interim superintendent as well, and I would like to say thank you all very much for um, your flexibility and in helping us out. Uh, getting this meeting coordinated. It was not easy on the on the back end, and I very much appreciate your uh, cooperation and support in, in making this happen. Um, and I will turn it over to Heather. Good evening. My name is Heather Leighton, and I'm the principal at Vista Middle School. And I um, have been um, working closely with Faye and Mark on providing support for our Indian education programs. And so I'm here to be a part of the meeting tonight. So welcome everybody. It's good to see everybody. And it's nice to meet you in person, Peggy. And um, you too. And I see so, that Steve, Steve has joined us. So Steve, if you want to introduce yourself. Good evening, everyone. So my name is Steve Childs, and I'm a newly elected board member, and uh, I'm glad to be here tonight and uh, to see all your smiling faces. So um, that's, that's about it. Thanks. Andrew. Morning. Yeah. Andrew. Yeah. I just want to say Bernie is not conceded. Bernie sent out an email earlier with the um, the Facebook or with the Zoom link in it. So all these Bernie Thomases are actually um, are probably my board members or people from Lummy. <laughs> no. I was wondering about how many Bernies. So uh, if um, if I don't know, like, Connie, looks like one is looks like one is TJ. Yeah, I, that's the only reason I realized, like, why does Bernie keep popping up, Bernie? <laughs> but that, so TJ I see is on here, and I don't know who the other two Bernie Thomases are, but um, if you guys could introduce yourselves real quick, too, please. Andy Jefferson is one of them from JOM. Is it okay to go, Jana? I'll go if uh, no one else is on. Uh, my name's Terrence Adams, uh, also known as TJ. I'm the vice chairman of the Lummi Indian Business Council. Um, glad to be here today. I appreciate uh, the invite and I'm very excited to uh, hear what we have going on within our schools and our community and um, it's good to see my Auntie Jessie. I haven't seen her in a while, so I get to see her over Zoom. <laughs> Hope you're doing well, Auntie. And uh, once again, I thank you all for your time, your efforts, and uh, I hope everybody's having a, a good and safe time through these floods and this crisis times that we're in. So thank you all. Great. Anyone else? All right, so uh, for us, the first thing that we do uh, is to adopt the agenda, and I hope everyone has had a chance to look at that. And so I'll take a motion to adopt the agenda as presented or make any changes that uh, folks would like to have. I will make a motion to adopt the meeting agenda as written. All right, I've got a motion to adopt the agenda as written, and, and we can all 
uh, collectively vote aye or nay. So all in favor of adopting the agenda as written, please signify by saying aye. 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 Bernie, you didn't vote. Aye. Okay, thanks. All right, so the first item on our agenda is a presentation by Ferndale School District on how our Lummi students are faring in Ferndale schools. And so, um, I don't know, Mark, did you have anything you wanted to say before we start that? The presentation? Well, we're, gonna, we're gonna turn it over to Faye and-, and uh, okay, Just Faye and, okay, Faye? Yep. Well, thank you. I'm gonna share my screen right here. There we go. Okay, hopefully, um, thumbs up. Can you see that? Brilliant, thank you. Uh, so thanks again for joining us. This is our annual meeting where um, we share with you data um, on our students and how they're faring in Ferndale schools. And I'm gonna use a phrase that Heather's taught me very well, um, which is a Stevenson. So please bear with us as we share this. One of the things that we learned um, this year was how hard it actually is to pull data um, from previous years and really appreciate our staff in our schools helping to gather that. Um, so with that, what we have learned is that we will run the data at the end of June before we roll up into the next year so that um, it doesn't, um, doesn't cause as many difficulties in running current data as it does in running previous year's data. So with that um, being said, our one of some of the things we'd like to share with you tonight um, our information on our student enrollment and how our students are doing to share some information on how um, um, Native American programs and the work of our student engagement liaisons. Uh, one of the things that I'm sure is very important to you is the budget information and how we um, are allocated dollars and that directly um, ties into our impact aid piece. And then we'd like to share how we recognize and honor um, our Native American students. And as you know, we are just today wrapping up um, Native American Heritage Month. And we've been doing lots of work in our schools to honor and recognize that. And then finally, just to touch base with you on um, communication. So, and I'd just like to say, as we start that, I really appreciated the work that Jana, Heather, um, Bernie, and I have been doing this year to work on um, the JPPs and the IPPs and planning, collaboratively planning this meeting um, and excited for some of the things that we have upcoming in the new year to kind of look at the realignment. And I'll explain a little bit about that later. So as you can see here, um, we have, this shows kind of our progression from 2017 through to the fall of this year on our student enrollment. And you'll notice one of the light items there is our total LUMI student population and also our total Native American, Alaska Native population. Um, so of course we have students from other tribes and um, areas. So we pretty much stay fairly consistent around hovering right around 14% um, of our student population are um, students who are Native American. This chart here is difficult obviously to read, so I've put some bar graphs together for you, but one of the things that we've tracked over the last three years is our average daily attendance for our students from each of our schools. Uh, and comparing our LUMI students to our non-LUMI students, or sorry, Native American students to our non-Native American students. Uh, but it's much easier to see in bar graph form. And you can see there we've gone, looked at 2019 to 20, and then 2020 to 21, and then just a snapshot of how we're doing so far this year. Um, you'll notice last year, when we were in remote learning for a significant portion of the year and then returning students to hybrid model, beginning with our youngest learners in October, um, our attendance was significantly lower than previous years. And it's starting to trend back up to normal this year, I say normal pre-pandemic, I should say rather than normal, because uh, what is normal? 
and our bar graph. So you can see in the all students compared to our Native American students that our Native American students are a little bit lower, particularly last year, the um, pandemic really had a significant impact on um, attendance. It was challenging for everyone. <laughs> and turning a little bit now to look at course completion. And one of the things that we noticed last year, and this kind of aligns really with our attendance, is our students really, really struggled with um, learning remotely and transitioning to only being in school part time. And you'll notice that here we have um, Horizon, Vista, and Fandel High School. And the total number of courses that weren't passed. And at the middle school, we use um, U, we don't use F, we use U, which means that they're not quite there yet, they're not at standard. And then at the high school level, we use an NC, which stands for no credit. And that just means that they haven't um, met standard on that course yet, so they haven't passed it. Um, you'll see that that was a huge impact throughout um, our student body, but particularly for our Native American students. If we were statistically significant, we should see that 13.8% of our Native American students were struggling at the same rate as our non-Native American students. So you'll see from this that we uh, fell, um, were higher um, and faring a little bit worse in some situations. Um, our 11th graders were probably the closest to statistical significance, but our um, sixth graders, particularly at Horizon, really struggled. So that's something for us to pay attention to and, and particularly track as we go through the year. Um, I was When I was looking through this earlier, I thought it'd be great to pull up the year before. But then as I did that, I realized a little bit of a caveat. This are the um, say, same chart and how many uh, no credits and how many um, unsatisfactories in the middle level. But one of the things to bear in mind is that this really only reflects first semester. Whereas if I jump back, this reflects the whole year. And the reason for that is when we closed um, the physical buildings in March, 2020, we made a decision as a secondary teaching and learning team that we did not want grading to be punitive for our students. So we awarded kids, they either received an A or they received an I, which meant that they were just incomplete in their course um, and that, that they could work to make up at a different time. So statistically, um, not as, I mean, much, much closer statistical significance the previous year to this year. But like I said, that caveat of second semester, um, I would say we only had a handful of incompletes. So it doesn't really compare in a great way, but I thought it was interesting to just see the impact that the pandemic truly had on our students. Uh, again, Last year, we didn't have great um, opportunities for athletic and activity participation, particularly at the middle level. We did a lot of um, intramurals and things to engage our students, but we didn't necessarily track who was participating um, in terms of the breakdown of demographics of our students. A little bit different at the high school level when we jumped back into um, in person, we're able to participate back in with the WAAA and athletic competition. So um, again, if you look at the statistical significance, our Native American students aren't participating at the same um, percentage as our um, non-Native American students. And I'm gonna pause there because I see Jana's hand up. Well, just going back to the numbers real quick, and you said it's kind of, P comparing green apples to red apples mm -hmm. um is there a way to look at just those same quarter or the same semester though and compare it that way that or is would it still be 
That is a great idea, Jana. And that's something that until I really looked at it today, I was like, oh, that's um, that's why our, our data may look really different in second semester um, last year compared to this year. But I will, can definitely do that and share that back with you. Okay, pausing and um, one of, we have Oksala um, at Fundo High School, which is our Native American um, leadership group, and then a club and group. And then at the high school, we have uh, the middle level, we have Chesquin. And you'll see that the numbers of participants kind of fluctuate roughly around between 20 and 30 at the, uh, the high school. And Logan, Toby, who's our Native American engagement liaison at the middle level, is just about to start his um, chess wing clubs back up for this year. So we'll have those updated numbers for you for next year. Sharing a little bit on our students who are served in special education. Um, one of the pieces here is that we are throughout our entire system moving to a multi-tiered system of supports and using universal design for learning throughout our system. And that's one of our big initiatives using our ESSA funding um, to support putting a lot of systems in place to support our students who need um, some more intentional targeted support, some additional short-term support, but so it's very fluid so that students can move within and outside of supports as they need that. Um, but as you'll see, our average special education population um, is 13.8% with the state average being 13.5. And one of the pieces there to truly understand is that the MTSS model and the UDL, so multi tiered systems of support and universal design for learning, are not just aimed for our special education students. They're aimed at all of our students to provide um, equitable access to their learning as each individual student needs it. So it's a support when they need it um, and they can come in and out of those supports as needed. And you'll see that our um, we are very, statistically not significant and not relevant um, in terms of our qualification for special education. So we actually with the state are working um, to really tr address and put systems in place and the MTSS and UDL is one of those systems um, to look and dig deeper into the disproportionality of overqualifying our Native American students in special education. So that's something that we're working on with the state, um, as well as within our own systems under that umbrella. So that's a big, a big target for us is to address that um, clear disproportionality. Um, as you'll see, two of our schools are particularly high, um, Eagle Ridge and Skyline um, hovering between 50 and 60% of their Native American students are served in special education. So switching on to our um, LUMMI programs, this is really quite um, exciting to see the growth of our programs um, from 1920 into 20 and 21. Um, part of that at the middle level is our, um, our LUMMI language classes that um, run through both Vista and Horizon. And then um, at the high school, we have different levels of Voxala, as well as Lummi language offered. Um, and at the middle level too, and um, Heather, feel free to jump in at any time. Um, at the middle level, we also focus not just on language, but on um, tying culture into those language classes. So whether they're called a Lummi language class or whether they're called a cultural class, they kind of incorporate culture and language for our kiddos. Uh, so you can see that we're, we're really growing um, across all levels of our students that are um, involved in our programs from last year to, well, the two years ago to last year, we doubled at the high school level um, and increased pretty significantly at the middle school level. Um, so, and one of the exciting things that we, we 
were awarded last year and then we were again successful this year is we received a competitive grant from OSPI to offer um, Lummi language to our elementary schools. So we started it last year, um, which was again challenging with the pandemic and being on Zoom. Um, and then this year we were actually awarded the grant for two years. So we've been working with um, Kaliwasit, Ted Solomon, um, to really work on develop, developing those programs, getting the right people in place. Um, we have Nancy Jefferson teaching at the middle schools and being supported and mentored by Smackia. So very exciting there. And then Cynthia Wilson has just begun, like in the last week or so, teaching um, Lummi language to our elementary students at Skyline and um, Eagle Ridge. And Heather and I met with Kalusa this morning and just kind of look at, you know, talking about the beginning of the program and the kickoff and um, getting into the classrooms there in the elementary school. So fun to see our kids being able to connect at a younger age. And as I mentioned, here is our staff. Um, Cynthia is new to our team. And we have Mia Owings and Logan Toby, who serve in our liaison positions at the high school and middle schools. And then um, Nancy Jefferson teaching at the middle schools, and then Smack here at the high school, and also a little bit at Vista with Nancy. And then we're excited this year. We have um, JJ Jensen is an assistant principal at um, Ferndale High School, and he is First Nation Canadian. And Heather may feel free to jump in, and if you, I can't remember the exact tribe. <laughs> he's he's a dis, he's a, also a descendant of the Nooksack tribe, but he's an enrolled member of the Squay Nation. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so it's great to have him on board and joining us. And then we hired um, Victoria Caswell member of the Lummi Nation. Um, she's teaching junior English and yearbook at the high school um, and is really glad to be home and we're glad to have her back. Melinda? Um, I recognize some of the faces, but would you mind using your mouse to say who's who? Absolutely. Thank As you. This is Smekia, right here on the left, moving along one step is JJ. And then Victoria, Cynthia, up top here is Mia. And below is Nancy and then Logan. So, and they are a great team. And I should put Heather in here too. Why, why don't I have your picture in here? But I was gonna let, um, I see Seattle look and, and who else did I see on here that joined us? Um, oh, Je yeah, Jesse. Um, Victoria Caswell is Auntie Danita's niece. She lived, she, um, was in Spokane for a long time teaching English, or well, not a long time, but for a few years teaching English, but she's from the Washington family, Auntie Juanita's niece. Thank you. Yeah, we need to add you then to this, Heather. Um, so, that, so that's our, our team. I'm very glad to have them. We enjoy working with them, so. Um, and then on to budget. So, um, here you can see in 2021, um, we spent just under $256,000 on our native student programs. Um, we received 312,000, almost 313,000 in impact aid, as well as our tribal language grant of just, just a tad under 34,000. And then we also received 132, is almost 133,000 for Title VI. Uh, we currently use a combination of funds to support our Native American programs. Uh, we use Title VI, Title I, Tribal Language Grant, Impact Aid, and then also our general fund um, basic education dollars. So uh, lots of different pots of money, support lots of different programs. Um, and one of the things with the impact aid application for last year was we were able to use um, the previous year's data and information to apply for last year's impact aid. Um, and we're just waiting to hear if they're making adjustments for this year on how we um, process that. But we haven't quite got that information yet, um, but given the fact that it's usually due by the beginning of February, we should be receiving that information fairly soon. 
And then this has been a really, really exciting month. Um, if you remember a couple of years ago in just 2020, right before schools close, um, Fundell School District observed Treaty Day for the first time. Um, so we closed our schools in observance of Treaty Day. And at the time, we also um, provided some education behind that for our students, K through 12 and our staff. And um, Children of the Setting Sun produced a wonderful educational video on Treaty Day and what a treaty was. And then our um, teaching and learning team developed lesson plans to support that instructional educational video. So as um, a Ferndale School District Board knows, and I'm sharing with the Lumination Ed Board, we as a district wanted to, and our board wanted to adopt a land acknowledgement. But we just didn't want to just ad adopt the land acknowledgement. We wanted to make sure we provided the education around the why of a land acknowledgement. So back, um, gosh, a year, I can't remember the date, so I don't want to misquote. Uh, but our board asked um, Jesse and Heather and Dr. Quinn at the time to um, work with the Lummi Nation. Um, to develop a land acknowledgement. And Heather took a significant lead role in that work um, with the Lummi Nation, had an ad hoc committee that worked together to develop the land acknowledgement. And that was approved by um, resolution um, back at the very beginning of the summer. And then throughout the summer, um, Heather worked with Children of the Setting Sun to develop an educational video on um, the land acknowledgement and share the educational piece behind the why. Um, and so then we, that was completed whew, like right at the end of October, right Heather? <laughs> right at the very beginning of uh, Native American Heritage Month. And so we spent a lot of time with, and you, you had the word MTSS or the acronym, Multi-Tiered System of Supports. Our co we have coordinators in each school. So we work with them and they produced um, work to develop um, developmentally appropriate lessons to accompany the video for our students. And the video is, if you haven't seen it, it's phenomenal. It's about 40 minutes long. And obviously a 40 minute video for a kindergarten or first grader was probably not gonna be the best um, choice. So they actually worked to edit the pieces as a team as to what would be appropriate for um, our younger learners and put together a short version and then the full version. And in the last week or so, our teachers um, and our buildings have been sharing that video on the land acknowledgement and then our leading those lessons to our students. So really providing the education behind the why. Um, and that was again done with um, collaboration with Children of the Setting Sun. Heather, is there anything you want to add there? Because you are such a significant part of this. No, I think you covered it all. <laughs> it was it was great. And it's been very well received. Our students are uh, very, very much um, commenting on how much they, they learned from it. So it was a great experience. And it followed the Treaty Day piece very nicely. So we, we now need to um, figure I think, out- I think comes next. I think, I think the only thing that we would probably want to mention is it is in alignment with um, since time memorial curriculum, the um, learning outcomes that that we use to create the content for the educational video um, are the exact learning outcomes that are tied to since time memorial. The um, if you don't know what since time memorial, look on OSPI's website, mm -hmm. and there's some state mandated. Um, curriculum on there. And so we use that information as our learning outcomes and it aligns nicely. Yeah, it, it's very perfect. And one of the things in the STI since time immemorial acronyms, educators love acronyms, um, is that it should be a place based approach. So the fact that we have made this um, very place based, um, it totally aligns with um, the STI. So it was it was great. If you, if you need the link, let me know, but it's um, available on our, I believe it's on our website and it's definitely on our Facebook page. So, or YouTube, you can find it. 
Uh, so that was a big part of the work for our recognition this year um, and honoring our Native American Heritage Month. Um, but that wasn't the only piece. Um, different schools did different things in terms of displays and sharing information. Um, if you walked into the high school, Smackier and his students have put together an amazing um, display in the kind of that big open area in front of the office. Um, lots of artifacts. Um, they were out there regularly drumming and sharing their music and their dance with um, students and staff that were walking by. Um, it was it was really cool to be down there after school, particularly. They were really um, active and and sharing a lot with us. It was it was beautiful. Um, so Smacky does a wonderful job of of sharing information and having his kids share information out with their student body. And then another highlight was at the end of this month, launching that fourth and fifth grade learning language classes. And then Jana and Heather, I'm gonna rely on you here to uh, support me a little bit as well. Um, we met, gosh, a few weeks, weeks ago and looked over our JPPs. Our JPPs are our joint policies and procedures that we agree um, as the two boards to work within. Um, and so we looked at them, made a few edits, made sure that we clarified some things that, um, you know, kind of updated it as to what we're realistically doing. Um, one of the things that we say is we have two board meetings a year. And what we realized is that one board meeting is this joint meeting that we usually do in November, December. But then we also um, meet, a few of us meet with the Lamination Ed Board kind of we, we've been meeting September, October, but we like to do that more May, June to share how we as a district use our title dollars um, with the board and share information and kind of catch up on any things that we can uh, touch base on at that time as well. So it'd be kind of two meetings a year, as well as um, meeting throughout as we as we need. And the IPPs are the Indian Policies and Procedures, and they're a federal requirement for impact aid. So we like our JPPs because it's how we work together, and the IPPs are the overarching piece. And when Jana, Heather, and I looked at it, we they align with each other very nicely. That there's nothing missing on either the IPP or the JPP. But what we have learned is that there are six IPPs and we have eight JPPs. So we're meeting in January to realign our AAP, JPPs into the six IPP category. So we'll do that work and bring it back to you. Uh, I shared the JPPs and IPPs that we worked on with Jana this afternoon. So she I can share them out with the Lamination Ed Board. And um, they really, if you think about IPPs, the, the federal piece, that's kind of like our policy. And then the JPPs are the procedure. That's how we actually do the work together. So it's, it's a nice way for me, at least, to think about it as having the overarching, here's our policy, and then here's our work. Um, so then Impact Aid is um, a federal government providing funding for school districts who um, have reservation trust lands within their boundaries. So, Prior to collecting those, and this is what Jenna was referencing earlier about um, the Lamination Ed Board um, signing off on or agreeing, um, is that prior to us collecting impact aid, our JPPs and IPPs must be approved by, um, actually by the Ferndale School District, but the um, we look for the Lamination Education Board to say that, yes, you agree with them as well. And then um, one of the changes that we have made is that back in late 2020, our JPPs didn't align and reflect the language of the IPPs. So we made changes to that then. And then this is where we now want to come back and look at aligning our JPPs into these six same categories as the IPPs so that we have policy and procedure that aligns with each other. Um, and then I mentioned earlier about our application for impact aid being um, whether we can use previous year's data or whether we 
do our usual pre-pandemic um, gathering of the data and then submitting the impact aid application. We should hear fairly soon as to what that will look like. And then our goal is to continue that collaboration and continue meeting um, again prior to the pandemic, um, Bernie, Dr. Quinn, um, Jana, and a few others have met um, between monthly and you know quarterly um, for coffee just to touch base and, and check in. And we'd like to obviously continue that relationship and partnership too. And um, that's in within our GPPs as well. And that's one of the ways in which we communicate is keeping in touch and um, scheduling time to meet together. Um, Heather and I meet monthly with Kaliwasit um, in the language and culture department. So um, touching base there and making sure that um, we're in alignment and address anything before it becomes um, a concern and just checking in on how things are going. Um, we also have monthly meetings with JOM and tomorrow is our November, December meeting at noon. And we had been talking about um, whether that timing at noon was the best timing for our families. Um, for our Hispanic and Spanish speaking families, we had actually offered family evenings, um, informational evenings, and we provided um, a Zoom about once every month, once every six weeks um, in the evening. So one of the one of the pieces that we're looking at is whether maybe moving to an evening meeting may be more convenient for our families and potentially in the new year changing the time to better accommodate and ensure that people that want to be there can be there. Uh, we have a dedicated school district Native American Facebook page, which Pam Jenkins, who works um, in mine and Kelly's office, keeps updated and is often asking for, hey, give me something. If you want to share it, please share. Um, we talked about our joint meetings. We talked about our coffee meetings with our superintendents and members of our teams. And then one of our best ways of communicating is through our staff. So Mia and Logan and Nancy and Smackia uh, do a lot of outreach, a um, lot of connections, a lot of time talking and and checking in. And then um, we've also had people, obviously Heather, um, prior to me, Dr. Quinn, um, where people knew that they could reach out and get help when they needed it. Um, so again, please don't ever hesitate to reach out. Um, and then um, if we can better communicate with you, we'd love to hear about that. And we'd love to hear if you'd like us to communicate differently. So any, any feedback there would be great. Well, thank you, Faye. That was a great presentation. A lot of work. Um, did you have other things to say, Faye? Or? Nope, just to open up to questions, comments. Um, I'd to love to hear some uh, feedback from uh, our Lummi Nation school board members, as well as Ferndale District. There's, there's a couple people that have their hand up, Andrew, but like Jana and Melinda. Jana? Yeah, I, um, Faye, and I know it was kind of last minute, but there was, we were going to discuss, or you were going to kind of give us an update of the STI. Um, and I don't know if you have that or if anybody could kind of go over that a little bit. Or yep. where that's at, or you know, just a little bit of an update on. Definitely, Jenna. We popped that at um, agenda item three point oh nine, so right a little bit further down the agenda. Oh, sorry, I didn't open the agenda, so my fault. No, nope. my apologies. It's all good. Yeah, you touched on a lot of the agenda items that will come to yeah. here as we move down the list. Um, but other comments or thoughts? Uh, Melinda, did you have one? Yeah, Faye, on slide number three, um, there's percentage of all students who are Native American or Alaska Native. We've got about 13, 14% on that slide. But in other reports that we get, like a personnel administration report that we got, it's around 9%. Can you explain where it is and why the difference in the numbers? 
That is a great question, Melinda. And it comes from when we run federal race categories, um, we can pull out just Native American, Alaska Native. Um, and a lot of the times that our students are um, can, classes mixed race. So they have, they're either Hispanic and Native American. So that's why you see it kind of fluctuate a little bit is whether it's being pulled out as um, mixed race or simply Native American. Um, so it's um, not as many of our students are just Native American, Alaska Native, a lot more have two or three um, race categories in their federal categorization. So on the other reports that we see more often that are around 9%, is there any reason why we can't use this number or we have to use the other number or I'm just curious? Yep, great question. I actually was talking to Kerry, who's our data processor today, um, about that and trying to make sure that we keep consistent in how we report and how we pull it out, because you'll see a report later um, that you read in the next few weeks that um, pulls out mixed race and then doesn't pull out mixed race. So I asked exactly the same question, like if we could just be consistent with ourselves and we know what we're talking to. Yeah, maybe adding another line or something. I don't yep. know, but I don't want to forget 5% of those kids and yeah. Yep. yep. Other thoughts or comments? Yes. Uh, Andrew? Yes, Lawrence. <clears throat> hey, good evening, everybody. My name is Lawrence Solomon. I'm a education rep for the, for the council here in Lummi. And it's uh, really good to see everybody. And um, usually we'll, we'd be eating at the Silver Reef Casino or up at Vista. So really glad to see everybody this evening. Uh, we're doing the best we can. We could uh, meet like this. This is the safest way we could do it. So I'm really glad to be here with all of you. And uh, thank you, Faye, for the uh, good presentation. Uh, just like you said, you know, communication is, uh, is, is paramount, you know, just like safety and stuff, and I uh, really appreciate this uh, presentation. <clears throat> uh, so I have a few things. Um, it might not be on the presentation, but uh, some of the things I, uh, I think this is a perfect opportunity to express issues or, or things that our, our people you know, are voicing you know, at this time, you know, during our joint meeting. Uh, where we can address, we don't have to address it today, but at least bring it to the front to, for next time we can address other things. But I'm happy to be here with the, uh, the Lumination Education Board and I see Terrence and uh, Mr. Villiers. It's really good to see you all. <clears throat> um, like I said, uh, my name is Lawrence and I, I attended Central and uh, I'm a Central Panther, Vista Viking. And I also went to Friendo High School. so. Um, I went to, through my whole life, I, I attended Friendo School District, and um, it's really important, uh, you know, these meetings that we have, these meetings, um, I, I talk about it time and time again. Um, I served in the United States Navy, and uh, the United States, we have the world's strongest Navy, not because we have the, the biggest warships or the biggest aircraft carriers, not because we have the most money, then it's, uh, we have the world's strongest Navy because we acknowledge each other's values and we respect each other's values. Uh, people from all walks of life, uh, African-American, Caucasian, Hispanic, Latino, Filipino, Indians, Native Americans, all walks of life. Um, we're the world's strongest Navy because we acknowledge and respect each other's values. And, um, really want to, you know, uh, to little, talk a little bit about that and why this is important, why we get to meet today. But um, uh, towards the end, I'll talk a little bit about it. But um, some of the things that we that were brought forward to me today, uh, I talked a little bit with some uh, the Lummi members. Are they have students that attend uh, Friendo School District, uh, elementary through high school. Um, one of the things, uh, I guess that we don't have to talk about it today is uh, the floods. You know, safety is paramount. And uh, 
And I noticed yesterday that Ferndale School District was closed. And that, you know, and looking out for the safety of our families and our students, and I really appreciate that. And, um, you know, it's uh, things that we don't expect and uh, we handle it the best way we can. Uh, COVID-19, um, some of the things that were brought forward to me is, you know, the kids feel safe. You know, it's a good, good compliment. You know, Ferndale School District is doing a good job in addressing uh, to make uh, the kids feel safe, you know. And uh, some of the things that um, from COVID-19, it brings other things to the front, uh, like uh, behavior health. You know, some of the things that our children are experiencing uh, during these times, uh, even ourselves, you know, if it's anxiety, depression, or these other things, you know, that, you know, check out kids. You know, we really appreciate the Ferndale School District and what they do for our kids. And I'm really glad, you know, Faye, you mentioned that earlier that uh, there's Lummi language now being offered at the elementary schools. And that's, that's awesome. Um, some of the other things I wanted to talk about what was brought forward to me today um, is the Lummi student athletes. Uh, there's student athletes, they attend uh, Fernda High School or, or Vista or Horizon. And they, they expressed to uh, uh, one of our, uh, you, know, they, you know, somebody has to advocate for our students and they feel, feel like they're being left out. And, you know, uh, if they're not being heard, you know, I would really want to be that voice for them. We've had a lot of uh, Lummi athletes that have attended Ferndale, uh, Drum Toby, Kenham Johnson, Tyson Herrero, Robin Finkbonner, just to name a few. So I think, um, you know, I think, you know, to acknowledge it, and you know, that's how the kids are feeling. They, they feel that they're uh, maybe not given a chance or they feel less or they, you know, something, you know, if it's equity, you know, I think they need a chance, but I just want to be here and be a voice for our students. And um, when it's time uh, uh, with uh, Miss Layton, we have a little presentation that uh, when, when, when there's a good time, but uh, I want to thank you for listening, you know, and I'm happy to be here with you all to, you know, bring these things forward, good and bad. You know, we have a lot of good things come to our board meetings, a lot of some bad things. And, you know, there are our issues that we have to face and how are we going to address those? But uh, thank you, Faye. And thank you, Mr. Chair. Hi, Shka. Thank you. Other comments? Thoughts, Mr. Chair? All right, great discussion. Um, I know there's, uh, Jesse, yes. Yeah, um, I was just gonna say, um, I could probably echo what uh, uh, Lawrence said um, since I've been on the board and you guys have heard the story I've been telling you and that's no secret. That's what Lawrence was talking about. And I'm glad he said something. Uh, the one, one comment I wanted to make was the IPP and a JPP should be reflected in a school board policy. And that's, it needs to be reviewed. I mean, we can do JPP and IPP, but we could set that aside or put it on the shelf or whatever, but it's not in the policy. So I think if we align what those have said, what, it, what you've been working on, say, um, and then if we, uh, you know, concentrate on the athletic issue too, that's a big, it's a big deal. I mean, I'm telling you, um, our kids go to Friday do the sports more than anything. And then when they're involved in sports, they're involved in school. So really it goes hand in hand and, um, uh, I think we need to work on that, especially the policies, uh, to make sure those are aligned. And um, Mr. I don't know, Mr. Fairbairn or whatever, uh, 
is it reflected in your policy? If the coaches uh, take time for all the students, um, not just a handful of students, but all the students and give them a fair shake, you know. Uh, our kids are very, uh, um, talented and a lot of them they don't get to you know get that time to shine and they need I know all our kids need that and I'm going to keep saying it I, I said it before I said it a hundred million times and I'll say it again until somebody hears me you know um, Um, but I'm always going to advocate for the child. Thank you. I should go, Jesse. Others? I don't want to move on prematurely. So. Hmm. All right. Hello. Yes. Can I can I add something? Absolutely. Yeah, I just wanted to follow along um, with uh, Councilman Solomon and just thank Faye for the great presentation. I can see a lot of hard work research uh, went into um, went into your presentation and I just wanted to throw it out there and I think it would be very beneficial um, if you're up to it uh, on some platform, if we could share that with our community um, for better understanding, you know, and awareness. Um, and I do, do want to uh, thank Lawrence for bringing up, you know, just some some things that we are trying to address uh, as uh, on a leadership level and making sure um, our kids are well taken care of and pr provided for through this pandemic um, and understanding them and their needs. You know, for myself, it's always important to uh, be present in the moment for our kids, you know, it's, it's real easy to find a kid a ride or have them use their laptop for homework or um, ask them about their game, but really being at the game and sitting down with my son and helping him with uh, his schoolwork and giving him a ride to school and uh, making sure I'm sending him to school in a good mood you know, because that's where he's going to learn the best and he's going to thrive. And the Lummi Nation School uh, goes above and beyond to accommodate um, my boys. You know, I, I like how uh, Lawrence referenced our student athletes and uh, the Blackhawks take pride in uh, naming them students first before they're athletes. You know, that's a um, a privilege to be a black cock, a golden eagle, a panther, a viking, um, all of those things, you know, those are things that are earned. You know, our elders teach us time and time again that, you know, any gift isn't given to you, you know, you need to earn it. And there's a lot of cultural values that go into um, what we teach our kids and instill in them from a very young age. And Hopefully someday it's passed on, you know, from what my grandparents have left my parents and um, passed on from so on, from gathering to fishing to uh, our traditional ways and what we practice in our longhouses. And I know that um, Ferndale and the Ferndale School District have been um, very understanding and sympathetic when it comes to um, our cultural ways in my experience and um, coming to, you know, coming to school and um, having some sort of, of, of empathy. Right. And so, um, you know, I just, I, I just wanted to throw that out there. If Faye's ever up to it, we can coordinate with uh, Miss Layton and see what uh, we could do to, uh, possibly share that with our people because it really helped me uh, have a better idea and understanding and so I can relay the message to to the people we talk to on a daily you know and I appreciate them as well as my aunt Jessie for bringing forward those 
um, those concerns. You know, I, I will say it, say it like it is that that's been going on forever, you know, and, and, uh, when we can break the cycle and, uh, you know, like I said, I truly believe we're not looking for sympathy, just empathy. You know, we want to, it's not asking for something to be handed over, but, um, you know, for instance, for anybody that's not aware in my own, um, conversations, you know, for varsity basketball, boys basketball, invite only, you know, and I've never heard of that in, in all my years of being involved in high school. And I played basketball competitively and uh, kind of it's just discouraging, you know, to some of those kids that do put the time in and the effort to uh, um, to play at that level. You know, a lot of these kids dream and grow up of being a golden eagle and representing their school at the highest level. And I I'm so grateful that somebody put that out there, that that comes with good grades, good academics. That's a requirement. That's the first requirement to play on any of these athletic teams is that your schoolwork comes first. So once again, Faye, I hold my hands up to you and I thank you for that great presentation. You know, I took a lot home from this tonight and I will be sure to share it with my people. And uh, hopefully someday down the road, we can get you to share that on a different level, on a different platform. Uh, thank you all. I speak TJ and I would be more than happy to feel free to uh, connect with me or through Heather, whichever is easier for you, but absolutely would be happy to. TJ, maybe put your policy person to work and have her coordinate that meeting. Oh, yeah, for sure. I'll, I'll be sure to um, do that first thing in the morning. <laughs> it's Marissa. Faye. If you guys know, I was going to say my new policy analyst as the new vice chair is Marissa Jones. That's Heather's daughter. <laughs> she definitely has my number. <laughs> yeah. All right. More, more, more than happy to help any way I can. OK, thank you. All right. Anyone else? All right. And I will promise you I'm not playing a game or texting people, but I'm trying to manage the agenda on my phone and it keeps going blank. So I apologize, but I never mastered how to have the agenda on my screen and see everybody. So um, in any case. So the next item on the agenda is actually a discussion, uh, a review and discuss the um, the uh, joint policies and uh, procedures, the JPPs that we have. And so um, I, I know these were attached to the agenda and I'm not sure if everyone has that available to them for a discussion or how we'd like to proceed with this discussion. Hello. Um, Andrew, yeah, I was just going to ask you if you wanted to. I can um, share my screen and then Jana and I can give a real quick and Heather can give a real quick overview on the JPPs if that works and then flip to the IPPs. That would be great. Um, and I'm just going to acknowledge that right now, you know, it's it's um, about 10 after six and we can work up to pretty close to seven. But then uh, we do have our regular business meeting at seven. So we may have to juggle a few items and, and discuss how we go forward in the future. But um, I didn't want to cut short the great discussion we were having just a few minutes ago. And so uh, we'll see how far we get. But uh, I think the discussion is great. And I think the uh, interactions that we're having are, are very, very important. So again, I don't want to cut that short. So Faye, I'll turn it over to you. You can share your screen and move ahead. Mark, hey. I'm if you wouldn't mind, just indulge me for just one second, because Andrew uh, prompted me earlier in the meeting and I missed it, uh, my opportunity. Um, that because of the kind of the disruption and, and change in schedule um, this month, we um, had a conversation, uh, Bernie and, and Kristen Kinley and, and I uh, spoke about when we went, moved this meeting to virtual and decided to kind of take care of the, the, the items we needed to um, from a business standpoint. Um, we would do that and then schedule another meeting in, in uh, January. 
um, where we could actually get together in person and have that share a meal and and uh, have that face to face opportunity to um, get to know each other a little bit better. So I apologize for missing my cue earlier um, to interject that, but um, wanted to make sure um, as we're bumping up the the time, we'll definitely have enough another opportunity to to uh, meet the rest of the agenda. So thank you. Well, if, if you decide to hold that meeting at the Silver Reef, I think uh, Leanne and I would like a rain check on that. All right, now, Faye, please. Yeah, and do, do you want to stop? Well, I was just going to say, maybe if we started with the IPPs, because um, just for that fact that it's really what brought us all here tonight, and the JPPs are, are we're going to um, adjust anyway and they're really kind of what you just went over um, is the JPP so really the the meat of it is the IPPs so as long as we get to that tonight because um, that that's a document that has to get sent off and the other is the work that's going to get done and that, that makes perfect sense, Jana, because that will give you, Heather and I, time to um, align the JPPs into the six IPP categories. Yeah. Okay. So, Jana and Heather, feel free to jump in here to, um, you've been part of this work. Um, so, the introduction really talks about equal access to programs, services, and activities offered within our district. Okay. Okay. Uh, there's a couple screens in front of your PowerPoint. Okay, hold on. Try again. <laughs> How's that? Good. So yeah. the, yep. <laughs> okay, perfect. Sorry. <laughs> um, so really, um, the, the purpose behind the IPPs is to make sure that our um, access, and this is a great point that um, TJ and um, Lawrence and Jesse talked about was making sure that we have that equal access to programs, services, and activities offered within our district, um, and that we review them annually, and that in order to um, apply for impact aid, these have to be approved by the Ferndale School District School Board. Um, we provide this attestation that this is how we um, work with our policies and procedures. Um, the first part is making sure that we communicate regularly, which again, I shared during the earlier presentation and shared how we do that and how we are continuing to improve that um, collaboration and communication. And um, Jana has copies of these, so can share them with um, the Lamination Ed Board and I will up ensure Jackson uploads them to board docs for our board members today. Um, so our first policy is all about how we um, disseminate information and that, how we share that information with you um, when we complete our impact aid application, um, how we assess our educational programs, which you've seen tonight, um, and how we plan for, again, our district educational programs, which um, we do both um, within this presentation tonight and then also um, when we meet and talk about our title funding um, sharing. So the second part of this is for how we um, notify um, the lamination and parents to share their views on our educational program. And again, this comes back to our communication with our JOM meetings, um, making sure that we touch base regularly and that um, the lamination folks know who they can access and contact um, when they need support and how we go about um, soliciting input from, from you. And again, we've shared this with you tonight, our November, December meeting, um, our federal title funding allocation, our monthly parent advisory groups, the third policy is on um, sharing information on um, annually assessing our participation, which again, we went over tonight and looking, and this is where we did the comparison between our Native American students and our non-Native American students so that we can really try to drill down into that e equitable access and 
um, as I shared earlier, one of our focus areas is on our special education um, qualification, um, working on addressing that. And then our fourth policy is on um, assessing and, and receiving input and then acting on that input, which you shared, and how we um, can continue to make sure that we um, push out information and then also receive it as well. We, we don't want it to be just one-way communication. We'd like it to be both ways. And the fifth procedure and policy is all on how we track those comments and how we keep um, informed on different topics and suggestions that we receive and how we address those. And then our final policy and procedure is providing um, current um, GPPs and IPPs to you prior to submitting the impact aid application. Jana and Heather, any additional comments on the IPPs? I kind of scanned those fairly fast for you. No, and just for my board though, the, the, these are a change. And the reason why we, like you said, we have eight, there used to be eight policies and procedures and now there's six. And if we, if you guys didn't do this meeting, and this is for maybe your new board members, you would have to request a waiver from Lummi Nation because you're getting the impact aid money for having um, the reservation within your service area. And if we didn't sign off either on the waiver or you having this meeting and showing documentation that you're having a meeting with us, then um, you wouldn't be able to submit the application. Uh, so that's the reason why all of this is happening the way it's happening. And um, besides being good neighbors. <laughs> that's the important piece is the um, being good neighbors together and working together. Faye, can you share the timeline? I mean, we're sharing the information here, but when does the board vote on it to adopt it? When do we send off the impact aid application, et cetera? I will deflect to Mark and Andrew on answering the logistical specifics. Yes, and I will certainly deflect to Mark. <laughs> and I will deflect to um, no. I think uh, <laughs> I believe it's I believe it's in December. But I will I, I have to double check on that. I know it's it's uh, very soon, but uh, oh. it's either December January. But I believe it's December. And I believe impact aid has to be filed before February 1. Yeah. Bernie, am I right there? I think we should have all deflected to Bernie. <laughs> <laughs> the hand signals, I could. <laughs> all right, were, were you gonna go over the um, KPP? Or, I know you've already done that. So is there any other thing that we need to review with this? And so, in I guess, and there'll be further discussion and action taken in December as, as needed uh, to make sure that this is submitted in, on, on time. All right. Um, the next item on the agenda is just an update on our February Ferndale School District levy. So I'm going to turn it over to Interim Superintendent Mark Zubach to give us an update. Yeah, that's basically the update. So in um... We are uh, at that point in time again when we um, will be running a levy. Um, I, I know the question I always get is really, it's awfully soon, um, which yes, it is. Um, we, with the levy failure um, uh, last time we got off cycle um, with the rest of the districts in the county. Um, so we ran a two, -year, a two year levy, which expires at the end of, of uh, 2022. So we need to renew that. So um, the um, we'll be putting out information and um, probably reaching out for some help um, to uh, communicate and, and provide information for um, uh, uh, folks uh, from Lummi because um, we need your support um, or would sure like it anyway um, uh, as we move forward with the agenda. Yeah, Heather. I was just gonna say, um, just remind you that um, I had a conversation with um, 
Seattle Lawrence today, and he's working on getting us on LIBC's agenda so we can bring a presentation out to LIBC um, and seek endorsement. That's fantastic. And I think it's going to be, he was working on December 7th. Thank you, Lawrence. That's that's marvelous. We appreciate that very much. Well, Mark, I was just going to add that this is the Ferndale School Board uh, decided to run a continuation levy in terms of the dollar amount. And so this is again a dollar fifty per per thousand for two years. Um, and then at the end of that two year period, if all goes well, we would be on the same cycle as all the other school districts uh, in the in the county as opposed to being off cycle. Right, and this it's a replacement. It's not a new uh, new tax. It's not a new initiative. This is a, uh, the old one is gonna go away. Um, so we're asking for a, a replacement um, so we can maintain our, maintain all of our programs that are currently funded out of them um, with the levy dollars. So unless there's any questions, about that. that was you'll just go into the effect of the bond sales um, and the impact on taxes at a later date, but that would cause that's a positive impact on the overall tax rate. And so hopefully our community will see that as a benefit and vote to continue this, this levy. Yeah, and it's actually we have the lowest um, school tax rate in the in the county. Um, our levy rates lower, our bond rates lower. It's we're in um, we have a low, low school tax rate compared to others. And we're planning on keeping it that way. So that's a good thing. And then Mark, you wanna just move right into, unless there are questions, if there are questions about the levy, we'll take those at this point. If not, I'm just gonna continue on to the next item, which is an update on the new high school. So Mark. Yeah, so speaking of bonds, um, so the bond that, that passed in 2019, um, anybody who has driven through uh, Ferndale recently in the vicinity of the, of the current high school has probably seen um, a visual example of, the, of the, uh, the new high school. You can actually see the, uh, the building going up, the, the steel structure um, over the roof of the, um, over the high school. Um, it's pretty exciting. Uh, it's uh, three stories with a mechanical mezzanine, so it looks really tall. Um, athletic wing, it's, it's going to be a really, really nice upgrade. Um, in that room, and I know um, uh, Jesse has asked um, for clarification, and, and um, we have in the plans a uh, um, uh, uh, loving language office room, classroom, um, uh, section right by the um, right by the commons, um, so there'll be a spot for um, uh, Smacky and the Oxala program and the um, everything in the uh, in the new high school. We are also one of the things that that we are um, pursuing, and we will probably be reaching out to somebody. We will be reaching out to um, uh, somebody for help. I'm not exactly sure who, um, so maybe you all can. Um, let me know. Um, we received a um, authorization from the um, State Arts Commission, um, and we've got some money to commission artwork um, for the new building. Um, and so we are interested in um, getting some local artists um, to provide art, uh, but we need to get them through the state approval process so they get on the list um, as a um, uh, being eligible uh, for the program. So um, uh, some direction on, on who to contact um, for that would be much appreciated either now or at, at a later time. So um, from my colleagues, anything that I'm missing on that, that I should throw in on the, on the, uh, on the school. We're a couple of years out from um, having it all open, but it'll have new, um, new athletic facilities, new vocational um, building uh, learning spaces. Um, the uh, greenhouse will be um, reopened. The aquaculture program will be um, rehoused in a different, um, a different uh, building. Um, so a lot of a lot of good stuff going on there. 
Nope. Okay. All right. Any any questions for Mark? All right. Continuing. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, oh, Andrew. Okay, do you uh, just submit names to you? Yes, Mark? that would be fantastic if you had um, some information for me. Okay, thank you. Yeah, appreciate that, Jesse. I Mark, still have that drawing Mark. that I made of you, Mark. Oh, you know, that might be outside <laughs> their budget, Bernie. They might not, that might not fall within the, <laughs> within, we didn't get six figures. It's not a Picasso, but it, it's a Bernie. <laughs> It looks like one of the early Picasso uh, charcoal sketches, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> charcoal phase, yes. <laughs> Mark, I was just going to say it might be worth our time to create an announcement and push it out through our Lemmy social media platforms to get the that's, word out to any Lemmy artists that we have that might be interested. That's a great idea. Thank you. And we you can know, assist that as well, coordinate. Sorry, go ahead, Bernie. No, go ahead, TJ. That's great. What you were going to say? No, I was just going to say say I, we can assist in that too as well, and uh, using our social media platforms and reaching out to tribal members and seeing what best fits within within the school board here. Um, just let me know how I can assist as well. And there's a lot of great artists. Maybe Perfect. that maybe that could be part of our presentation when we go out on the seventh. Mark. Sure. Yes. Let's work on a on a. Um, I think Selena is um, listening, so we can uh, put together a, a an announcement or a yeah. flyer, a post. That's great. Right. Other questions or comments about this, or just in general? Oh, just about this. We we know to curtail your thoughts and comments, right? <laughs> Sure, you, <laughs> you, you need to. You know, uh, Andrew and um, Leanne, I just want to uh, congratulate you on your years of service. As you know, I was uh, a school director there from um, 1996. So I was actually appointed by the board first and uh, served there until 2011. And, um, you know, served with you and uh, have a great deal of camaraderie from all the different um, practically anonymous things that we did uh, together during those years. Uh, but, uh, you know, the school districts um, play a very important, in my belief, uh, role, not only just in education, but also um, economics and, um, you know, improving the, uh, the quality of life. And, you know, it's one of the factors when you deal with, um, uh, in terms of economic development, you know, marketing to companies that want to relocate uh, to a particular area, they want to know what the schools are like. And, um, you know, because they have uh, families and desires of uh, having families uh, raised in, you know, good and decent uh, public schools, which Ferndale has always enjoyed one of the top reputations around the state, to my knowledge. And uh, I want to thank uh, both you and Leanne for uh, your contributions to um, uh, how, making you know our school district a uh, very professionally, highly op highly run operation of um, different things that we were able to do together, uh, including you know the formation and development of these the early on conversations like we're having tonight. And um, you know, I just want to thank you for your education, leadership down through these years. Um, but I also wanted to um, intimate to you this evening that when uh, Mark and I were talking about that uh, we weren't going to be able to meet tonight, uh, we were very chagrined in knowing that this was going to be your last, you know, meeting this evening. And uh, so I want to invite you to um, come back to our meeting in January whenever we're able to, um, you know, pull the members, uh, both of the Lummi Education Board as well as the Ferndale School District Board, um, you know, just to, um, uh, you know, we've had a couple of blankets and we've been gathering different people's prayers to um, wrap you and, um, you know, just symbolically just make sure that we are able to say a proper goodbye to you and um, a proper kind of thanks for you to uh, hold up our hands to you and all the different things that we've been able to do together. We couldn't possibly say thank you enough, but 
uh, we just want to have that public acknowledgement, you know, from the Lummi community, all the different things that you, you did and to call to mind some of those things that, that we did together during those, uh, during those years. Uh, but you're very, very important people to the Lummi Nation. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate that. That, that kind of got me misty. I thought I was making it through this pretty good. And uh, it's, been a, it's been a privilege for me to work, of course, with the Ferndale District, but also with the Lummi Nation School District. It's been uh, an education and it's been uh, exciting. And I, I'm excited because I, I know where we started years ago and where we are today. And there's still lots of work to, done, but, to be done, but we've, we've made some headway. And I'm proud of you to have been part of it. So thank you. And I look forward to, to January. Leanne, you got anything you want to say? I'm not going to put you on the spot, but I will. Well, I haven't cried, Bernie, and you're going to make me cry. So um, thank you. Thank you for your friendship. Um, this, is, this has been a wild ride, and I would not have done it any other way without you, Bernie. So thanks. All right. Well, we all just stop with that, but we won't. We will continue to march on and um, I'm going to stay with Mark and he'll give an update on the search for the next superintendent. Uh, which is one of my favorite topics of the night. The um, school board is uh, in the process of doing a, a search for a new superintendent, um, which will not be me. Um, I am the interim for seven months, and that's um, uh, that's it. I think everybody is very happy about that. Um, the uh, they are. I think several of you on the screen here have participated in the um, focus groups um, that the consultant firm um, conducted um, to get input on um, kind of what um, what qualities, what traits, what was important. Um, to uh, all of our communities in, in uh, new superintendent. They have gathered up that information and are actually presenting that to the um, Ferndo School Board um, tonight at the regular business meeting, what they found um, in um, preparation for uh, putting out the official announcement and advertisement. They have already kind of unofficially um, put it out on the street that, that we'll be looking for a new um, superintendent this year, um, but it will be officially announced and the official brochure um, will go in, be going out very shortly. So that's kind of where we are in the process. So once that information um, is out there, um, after, um, after we get back from the holidays, um, after people have a chance to, to put in their materials, um, they will start the screening process um, and narrow down the, the group of candidates and um, then begin conducting interviews in the, uh, in the spring, um, which I believe March, John, is that? He's looking to unmute. I, took me a little while. Um, yeah, I think uh, first screenings in, in February, preliminaries in, in, in the beginning of March and finalists the end of March, hoping to be able to announce um, right around the beginning of spring break. And the next opportunity for public input will be in that March timeframe, right? So questions or, or um, things to share on that? On the agenda, well, actually, no, I'll bring it up in next meeting. Never mind. Okay. All right. Well, if there aren't any other comments or questions, uh, we'll move on to item 3.07, which is an update on collaboration with JOM. So, Faye, I'll turn this back over to you. And this is pretty um, quick update because we covered it earlier today. Um, but one of the one of the things that we have noticed is we've had um, a significant um, attendee has been from the district level, which is great. Um, but our uh, family um, participation and engagement has dropped off. So one of the things we're working on in the next um, we have a meeting tomorrow, but then working with Candy and Heather 
um, to figure out whether there is a better time. Um, and if there's a better time in the evening, what maybe a better day would be um, and what that time would be so that we re-engage. We used to, um, and this was prior to me being in this position, but we used to have um, a lot of engagement when we met in person at JOM and had lunch, shared lunch together, um, which obviously we can't do right now, but hopefully we can in the future. Uh, but just looking at what might make um, make it easier for our families to join us. Okay. Question for comment for Frank? All right. Then I'll move down to 3.08, which is an update on our recognition of Native American Heritage Month and the land acknowledgement. And I know we've talked about this a little bit more, but Faye, I wasn't sure if you had other things you wanted to add. So again, Faye. Yep, I think um, Heather and I tied that really into our presentation earlier, but if anybody has any specific questions on, on things that we did, happy to elaborate on them. But our biggest um, piece of that recognition this year was really to um, work with the educational piece of the land acknowledgement that the um, Ferndale School Board uh, approved um, last month. So um, great to have an official um, land acknowledgement for the district that um, was approved by resolution from the Lummi Nation. So great process. So thank you. Benny? Thanks, Faye. For, um, I don't know how you were able to do that in these little tiny uh, <laughs> Brady Bunch um, vignette that we have going on here. But um, I just wanted to mention to you that uh, I shared it at a um, couple of uh, statewide meetings that I was party to and, um, you know, and then uh, prior to the Thanksgiving holiday and, and over the holiday, um, you know, the, um, uh, the president of the University of Washington, the um, dean of the Univers University of Washington School of Ed, uh, Eastern Washington president, Central Washington president, um, their provost, um, people from the governor's office had all seen the video, thought it was very moving, very touching for them. And, um, you know, they want to, um, want me to send along congratulations to the district and Heather and the rest of, um, you know, members of the Setting Sun and all that. And, um, you know, just um, so I encourage anybody that uh, hasn't seen it to uh, look it up on YouTube. Um, and just Google it and it's under Ferndale Land Acknowledgement. Um, you know, I, I didn't know the exact, um, you know, internet coordinates and everything, but uh, shared it with a lot of people and, you know, other tribal members are uh, like, uh, hey, how do we get to do something similar in our area and that kind of thing. So I wouldn't be surprised if you got a phone call or two just from um, other tribes saying, hey, how do we do that for our tribe? You know, so kudos to the uh, Ferndale School District and um, Heather and the rest of the members of the team that uh, helped to pull that off. It was really well done there. Thank you. And then Andrew, I just wanted to add that your colleagues, Leanne and Melinda did a fabulous job at WASDA in presenting the land acknowledgement and the process that the board and the district followed to get to that point. They did a fabulous job, mm -hmm. it was very well received. Well, and I will add that Heather and Kelly and Faye did a fabulous job pulling that presentation together. Sorry for the dog in the background. And Bernie, this presentation should go on the road. So if you have places where this presentation should happen, you get a hold of those women because it was it was well received. It was well done. It was heartfelt. It was um, just the best. And even outside of school districts too, I think one of the things I really appreciate about the land acknowledgement is that it's open to the whole community, everybody who is here on Lummi lands. So I really appreciate the Lummi Nation's leadership on this. Mm -hmm. I know the folks from the University of Washington want to come up and um, meet you all. And so I'm not sure when that's going to happen. It's just, um, you know, what I, word I was receiving back from different people. So. Anyway, right. I didn't take credit for any of it, by the way. All right, other comments or questions? All right. 
then our last general item is an update on since time and memorial curriculum. Today, that's you again. Thanks, I feel like I've talked a lot. Um, so actually for the um, Ferndale School District Board, um, during our regular meeting in just around about an hour's time, we have um, Dr. Laura Lynn from OSPI joining us to talk about um, STI at the state OSPI level. So she'll be giving um, some additional information on some things that um, the state, the state kind of overview of STI. Uh, but we um, back in, um, gosh, early spring, kind of right around April time, um, Dr. Quinn had put together a report on um, how we were managing and facilitating STI within the district. And a lot of our, um, we laid out kind of where all of different pieces of STI are placed throughout our different grade levels. Um, and then at the secondary level within some of our social studies classes, um, along with some of those really big district-wide projects that we shared earlier tonight with the Treaty Day educational piece and the video and the lessons, um, and then following up this year with the land acknowledgement piece, <coughs> a big part of um, the STI piece. And uh, there are five um, essential questions that the um, STI kind of focuses on and the big one of the big pieces to me is the importance that STI places on um, it being a place-based curriculum so really working with um, the Lummi Nation and um, in collaboration particularly with our culture and language department and our Lummi Nation colleagues uh, to make sure that when we provide STI, we're providing it from the lens of um, the original inhabitants of this land, which is the Lummi people. Um, so it's, it is woven throughout um, different grade levels, different contents, and then we're very intentional about kind of doing a K-12 um, piece. Heather, Kelly, feel free to add anything here. We know it's not perfect yet. We're definitely improving it and working on it at different grade levels and um, making sure that we make the educational piece as relevant and making sure that we are, we are sharing the historical truth of the land. I would just, I would just kind of, I don't know if acknowledge is the right word, but just remember that um, although since, since time immemorial curriculum is very important and it's a state mandate, um, it does, it does, it is a place, but it does require us to be place-based. And so we also have to acknowledge the protocols and the practices within the Lummi Nation and how they share information with us, how information is recorded. Um, we're very much an oral tradition. So it's a lot of things that STI wants us to partner with. They're not things that are written in a textbook. They're not written on a paper. You can't pick it up and read it which is why it's so important to do things like the Treaty Day video, like the Land Acknowledge video, because we can reach a large span of students on multiple flat platforms and with a big content that could be broken down between multiple grade levels and that's age appropriate. Um, and in getting working with an Lummi Nation to um, help us develop things like that and endorse it as as true and, and accurate work, um, that, that bridge has got to continue to be built and that partnership has to happen if we wanna do a really good job at implementing STI. Mm -hmm. So some, what I'm saying is sometimes things move a little bit slower than what somebody might want them to move because we also have to honor the practices and the protocols and the learning styles of the Lummi Nation. And they're very two different things. So um, we've, we've um, been very fortunate to have um, a very large staff of Native American Lummi members within our district and that has helped our progress. But we also have to recognize that um, sometimes I think like our, our classroom teachers, or our teachers might get a little bit impatient because their style of learning comes from this textbook. Mm -hmm. Our style of learning and teaching comes in a different way and we have to be able to, to be accepting of both, so. Thank you. Any questions on STI? I have a comment. 
um, you know, uh, thinking about SPI and how important it is to our school and to our students uh, to begin with. Um, I really see uh, TJ and Lawrence, uh, the, our child needs the office, a central office for SPI to um, get out the resources, the proper resources from the tribe, you know, that we can track what has been done and provide more uh, information that, that they need. And I, I'm available. I would love to help work on that. Um, just let me know. Thank you. Other comment? This is Jana. Um, Auntie Juanita's listening somewhere. I don't know where she's at on here, but she's muted somehow. So I just, she just texts me. She just wants to um, request that maybe we have a meeting to be updated on the STI um, in a little more detail. And then also another request is to get an update on um, any racial problems or solutions. Um, that are going on and so that we can be ready in case another event happens. Thanks, Jonathan. Other comments or thoughts on this? All right, we have just a few minutes left and we'll open it up for our final sharing. So if anyone has anything they would like to share um, at this time, um, you know, I'd just like to say again, it's been a, a, a privilege to work with, with the Lummi Nation School District, our school board, and, and the Ferndale School Board, and uh, I look forward to hearing about the continuation of the great work that's being done. So, um, I don't really have anything else to share because I'm not planning on doing anything outrageous after this next meeting. But, uh, folks? Anything to share, Bernie? No? I think, I think Council Member Solomon had something. Yes, uh, thank you, Heather. Oh, sorry. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Andrew and um, Leanne, um, I know Bernie touched a little bit on it earlier, but to uh, properly um, do it safely when we can, uh, I want to present this to you. We have two of these one for Andrew and one for Leanne. Uh, we can't thank you guys enough and your contributions and to the Ferndale School District to, and to all the students and our Lummi students in Lummi. And you guys are inspiration in how to be and how to serve the people. And uh, we wanna present this to you when it's a good time and wrap you with this. Uh, they say when we wrap you with a, a blanket that we're praying for you and that we pray that uh, this blanket brings you warmth and comfort and to know that that uh, you know this is uh, from love and kindness to you our friends Andrew and Leanne we want to present these to you when when it's a good time so uh, thank you uh, for all you do uh, for the Ferndale School District and all you do for all the students and our Lummi students thank you thank you that's a that's amazing I'm, I'm honored to receive such a gift yeah, I guess, yeah. Thank you. Uh, I look forward to that meeting soon. Other thoughts or comments to share? I know that going forward, um, the staff and administration at the Ferndale District will be reaching out to schedule the next steps on, on all the items that were discussed and touched upon tonight. And, um, they're great about keeping things moving. So um, I look forward to that. I, I know I won't see most of you, I think, until after the holidays, but I hope you all have a safe holiday season and enjoy being with your family. And I hope you're all safe. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Well, with that, so we can jump on our chairs and get to our next meeting, I will adjourn this meeting. Thank you all. Yeah. Thank you. Okay.